Ah. 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 You're doing the cooking today, John. Yeah, yeah, I'm cooking today. Yeah, I'll I'll get started then. Um, okay. A healthy a healthy twist on fish and chips, really. Mm -hmm. uh, we always look to, you know, look at the healthy element when we're planning dishes. Also, um, the having a spinal injury, it's the safety element as well. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'm from a um, catering background um, and. You know, it's easy to use deep fat fries and things like that, but I've had to adapt how I cook, really. And mm. I think with our recipes, it's just to make it as easy as possible for yourself. Because I know, like, today I'm quite, you know, fatigue kicks in and things like that. Um, and it's just not, try, in a way, trying to cut corners, but just to make it as easy as possible for yourself. But still having that nice dish of food at the end, and the satisfaction I think that you've that you've made something yourself. So I'll I'll go through the recipe today. I'm doing um, fish and chips, but there's a twist on that. It's with tartar sauce as well. But as I say, as I go through, I'll tell you the shortcuts and things like that that I'm going to make. And if you're if you're vegan as well, we're going to. Turn is going to do the banana blossom on Friday, right. which is re really nice and a different oh, alternative yeah. to the. I know it's delicious. Yeah. I've tried some. Charlie cook me. Excellent. Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get started. I normally have like an assistant, but my wife's not here today, so <laughs> um, I might be throwing things around. And normally somebody catches the pots and watches <laughs> them. Before. Um, that might not happen today. <laughs> I'm doing it all from a perching stool and like we always say, it's try and do as much prep and do it when you can. I used to just do everything all at once and cook the meal and things like that. But now it just takes, sometimes it might take me a few days just to write down the recipes and, you know, set out some kind of plan just to make it easy. But I'll get started anyway with the chips. I've got an active fry, so if you've got an active fry, it's just the spray oil, um, your seasoning, and I know this is, um, it's quite cheap up in Hull, you know, the chip spice. Mm. <laughs> <It's tough. laughs> you, know, you go anywhere and you can get the chip spice, so I think all my recipes, I don't think I've put it in a dessert yet, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> it could. Maybe, oh. caramel with chip spice. Mar I don't know. So there's paprika in it. So I mean, you could do. So you are the so you are the dessert guy. So I'll I'll leave that challenge to you for another day. <laughs> Thanks, John. Right, Tony, so can I just ask? Um, can you, obviously, you're down south. I'm down south. Um, have you been able to get hold of chip spice in your neck I, of the wood or ordering online? I didn't have any time. Got yeah. mine on Amazon. Yeah, Brenda got hers on, I think you got Amazon or Amazon, eBay. Yeah. Amazon, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. Maybe we should do a Southern chip spice. Mm. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be the same. No. <laughs> I, could always, I could always start posting it out to people. Yes, and like stick a tenner on it, John. You yeah. Know. <laughs> it's not expensive. No, I think we get it for a a pound a pot round here, which is, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not, not too bad. I think I'll pay more than that. Anyway, wow. I'll, I'll, get the, I'll get the chips in. Basically, I've just um, blanched the chips in hot water for a couple of minutes, um, drained them, um, make sure you really dry right. them off with a bit of paper here. And as I say, I've got an active fry, which I've just thrown them in the active fry, but I can't use that at the same time because it's quite noisy. So for anybody who ain't got the active fry, the oven's just as good. So I've just got a tray there that just goes straight onto the tray. And this is just a mixture of um, salt and cracked black pepper, really. Just a bit of seasoning on them. Not, not forgetting the chip spice, of course. And as I say, it's just 
as easy as possible. I could do with a higher oven, but that's just going to pop into there. Yeah. I was going to say, like, we were, obviously me and John have got, like, our, you know, things were happening in the future. And I think it's, like, quite important to, like, like preparing and stuff like this for, like, lives and some of our lives that we do. It takes, like, a few days just to get, like, one your head round to, because I normally like having one fr completely freshly done on the day and then I have, like, four other things so i have it fully done three quarters half quarter so I, I know i've got i can explain it all the way through so it just i was trying to, I was trying to explain john that it, it does take quite a bit of time and just energy to get like yeah i think it's the organized. i'm not organized. I, find, I find it difficult like the not just the physical but the mental aspect of getting your head around the recipe now before i was cooking for like 200 people for weddings and um, it'd be real easy just to cook a meal for two at home. But now I do find it more difficult and it's all about the, you know, you get sort of so dirty by health professionals about pacing and that kind yeah. of stuff. And yeah, like you say, Tony, it's, you know, prep, prep in advance. And even like today, I was going to do a white fish. But I was just thinking of, we always say, just make things easy if you, I didn't want to go out today to shop to use all my energy, something as daft mm. as it seems. So I looked in the freezer and I found a couple of bits of salmon. So I'm just going to do it with, just showing you really do it with what you've got in your cupboards if you can't get out to shop that day. Um, I did have my um, second COVID jab yesterday as well. So I do feel a little bit, bit, bit rough, but um, de definitely... We say that sometimes you could do like a stock of a challenge, you know, use things what you've got. Yeah. I mean, I did have a list. I was going to go out for some more potatoes, some more fish and things like that. But I've got quite a lot in. It's just making use of what you've got. But definitely the planning and preparation and things. I think um, also when it comes to something like fish and chips, like it's also, we we're talking about this earlier, weren't we, John? It's also about trying to keep it sustainable. So yeah. it'd be really yeah. easy to get a cod loin, although that's so expensive. But, you know, you could get a fish that's caught locally that would do exactly the same job. It would do just be as, just as nutritious for you. But it'd be so much more sustainable, especially with uh, the waters around the UK now are so overfished. Uh, it's, oh my God, I'm an eco-warrior. <laughs> <What happened there? laughs> definitely, definitely. I'm right on the... With working at the Deep in Hull, um, as now I was head chef, now development chef, reducing hours after spinal injury and things like that, uh, their number one message is sustainability and where things are from and that like that. And when I'm writing menus for work, you know, some people might think, oh, why can't you just use this fish? But we have to, you know, really look into the, you know, why, why and that, you know, answer answer all the questions and make sure it is sustainable which does take time does take time um so today i'm i've only gone to like the local supermarket was um a couple of pieces of i think you get like a bag of frozen salmon so i've got a couple of portions and even now in the supermarkets they say don't they you know it's all like msc and it's all sustainable and you can find out where it's from from and things like that so i've got my going back to the recipe i've got my chips in. i'll just go through and get the fish in the oven the chips will probably take about half an hour um me being a chef i don't so much like time things i'll just wait you know and check and know, know that it's ready um but if you want to follow the exact recipes they're all on the SIA and on our um, Facebook page. So all, all I'm doing for the salmon is I do like it from fish shop where it's deep fried and things like that, but I'm just going to do it in a um, light breadcrumb. All I've done with the breadcrumbs, I just blended them, them down earlier. We're going off track, but we do, we do say about gadgets to make things as easy as possible, and I think 
we was having a chat, me and Tony, what's your favourite gadget? And my favourite is probably my kitchen aid for like baking, but I think for everyday use just to make things that simple, it's the like a little mini um, food processor. Where, where where it says chop on the recipe, I just throw everything into that and it just, it's all about conserving that energy really. Yeah. So breadcrumbs, I've got a little bit of dill in there and a nice. little bit of sage as well. If you're from Hull, you'll know um, something that we all all have and it's um, a patty. Um, and that is just um, potato sage. Um deep fried, you know, about the size of a fish cake. And you'd get that with chips and people are like, why would you have potato and potato as a meal? But you'd, if you come from home, you'd understand. Um, or you get it in a bread cake or bam cake or whatever people call, you know, bread buns. Mm -hmm. And we'd have a um, patty butty. What, one of my favourites is a, Patty butty, uh, mushy peas, bit of tomato sauce, and you know something like that. So going back to my fish, all I'm going to do is just dip that salmon in some flour, pass pass the plates to my invisible assistant. Mm. <laughs> um, She'll be thanking you later, John. She'll be thanking you later. Do you know what? She said, leave all the pots for me, so I said, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. That's I true, love. If you would say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's gone, up, she's gone up for lunch. I said, um, you know, it'll be fine. I'll get washed up and stuff. She's like, no, it's all right. I'll do it. So I can't, I can't complain. Um, so, yeah, that's just in the flour, egg and breadcrumbs and I've just greased the, greased the dish and we say about healthy and stuff I just use these um you can get them in different flavors but you know like you fry like oils and stuff yeah I mean it's not as not as being a chef it's not as good but it's you know it adds that healthy element really so I've just did it so worked out that if you once those uh, little squirt cans are finished, it's actually just the amount it squirts out is one calorie. So just fill it up with olive oil. Oh, oh yeah, good I've idea. Them, that's my other one where I've just got filled up with like olive oil or something, you know. Uh, uh, that's such a good tip. I, I, yeah, I use rapeseed oil if I'm going to fry something. Okay. Great. Yeah. That's got my, yeah, that's got my fish in high, there high now. High temperature. What be a second? I don't, don't have a fryer. One thing, like, I don't know if, uh, I can't, I don't think John said, but one thing, like, you can do if you are breading something is have a dry hand and a wet hand. So you put the fish in the flour with the wet hand and then you sprinkle the flour over it and then transfer that into the into the egg then the egg into the breadcrumbs and do it that way so then you have a dry hand and you have a wet hand and then uh. the wet hand goes claggy and it's just yeah. i don't know if that's a technical term claggy but yeah <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Cause like whenever I make things like that, yeah, both. I end up in a bit of a mess and can't like try to switch out how you like that with sticky fingers. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell, tell you what I use, Tony. Actually, you know, because it's moving about and like washing your hands. I only mm. found it out the other day after making um, eight scotch eggs where you're dipping your flour egg breadcrumbs. Um, just your disposable gloves, um, um, you know, and then just use them and uh, throw them to one side, then you can easily, you know, get onto something else. Mm. I don't know why I'd use them today, really. <laughs> anyway, just a little square of lemon going over that um, fish. And I'm going to get that straight in the oven. Then it threw only a couple of thin pieces of salmon, so that'll only be about 10, about 10 minutes. 
So that's that's all that's doing away. That's all that's doing away nicely. Uh, for the for the mushy P element, I the other week when I was making you'll have probably seen the reel on social media. I just use for the ease um, a tin of mushy peas, um, a little bit of vinegar and mint sauce. But <laughs> I didn't have the peas in the uh, tin peas in today, so I soaked your um, traditional peas overnight. I've drained those off and they have been cooking away. I've added a little bit of mint sauce to do like the mushy peas with the mint in there. Tad, the tiny drop of them. Um, do they taste better than the tinned ones? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. I think I think the tins with the mint and you know if you put your own bits and your seasoning and your mint and um, your vinegar, the quite a close second the tinned. But I think the traditional peas, you know, are still better. Def definitely, yeah. Mm. Um, I was saying now, saying to my wife, now we always try and think of, I think for working in the industry, I don't like waste. So now we've got a big pan of mushy peas. And I think one one dish what we've made a few times with that is just turn it into a pea and ham soup. And uh, it's, not, it's not the, um, it's probably not the kind of weather for it now. Mm. But it's, you know, all about, you know, using things up and less food waste and things like that. Say mushy peas and mint sauce. I don't know, Karen might understand being from Derby, but for me, that always makes me think of Goose Fair. Yeah, which absolutely. Is, um, in Nottingham. You go, yeah, and you have to go there and you have your, mushy, oh. your little cup of mushy peas and mint yeah. sauce. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's. Um... Oh, you're going to blitz it into a sauce. Sorry, yeah, say that again. Make... Okay. Blitz it into a sauce. A pea sauce. Uh, well, we yeah, just um, yeah. When we go to the fair, I think Alison would be the same. So you've just got like mm. whatever your peas come in when you buy them at the fair, and then you just sprinkle mince. Well, sprinkle depends how much mint sauce you want. Some people sprinkle it on the top. Some people like mix it all in. Um, that, but that's what that's what I associate with the fair. Yeah, me too. I think that's like um, whole fair in about October time. You'd go down to whole fair. And Probably slightly different, but it was what I was saying before. You'd get your patty chips and mushy mm. peas. Mm. I don't, I don't think there's any mint in that one though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but like you're saying, Brenda, a nice sauce. Um, done it before, like uh, you know, if you don't want to mess about with the egg and bread crumbs and things, just I think just season a nice piece of cod or something like that. Yeah. Cook Cook that in the oven. Um, you could have your potatoes or a different oh. kind of uh, carbohydrate with it. Um, blend blend your peas up, and I've done it before, like a real nice smooth pea puree. I suppose I'll put it with mash, even. Yeah, yeah, mash like a potato rosti type thing or something like that. Mm. A really nice mint pea puree, um, and just a little bit, you know, a bit lighter, and with this hot hot weather and things like yes. that. I do like a, you know, a nice light meal with a salad, even. Yeah. Totally. I'm just going to move on now to making the tartar sauce, and this is this is another one again. Um, you can you can buy the going through like the hacks to make things easier. I bought some the other day chips there was oven chips and there was like triple cooked in um fat or some something um and there was actually really good i put it on instagram the other day and it was just like steak chips and some um tender stem broccoli so it was just really simple but it was still a nice a nice meal so you can yeah get some pretty decent um oven chips and things like that your mushy peas buy it in add a little bit of mint to it. And this is one I think with me just being a chef and I've got time, so I'm going to make, you know, make the tartar sauce. But def definitely just have a jar in your fridge, so everything you can do really, really simple. If you're doing Tony's recipe on Friday, it's the 
vegan tartar sauce and what's that? Is that in there? And it's instead of the mayo, it's um, yogurt, is it? Uh, yeah, I yeah. Sometimes use yogurt. Um, sometimes I use. You can get vegan mayonnaise, so you can use both. But I always put a dollop of English mustard in it to give it a bit of bite. Mm. Yeah, I think definitely like this one. I've got a little bit of horseradish, a little bit of English mustard, and you can do it. Do it to taste. I mean, I don't know about you, certainly, but I don't like anything spicy. I like I like horseradish. I like wasabi. Yeah. I don't like. Not really into curries. I, I eat them, but I'm not really into them. But I really like the. I like the ferocity of like wasabi because I like the feeling that it cleans your nostrils out and everything's clean. But sorry, that's put everyone off their. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I like wasabi. Yeah. I think wasabi is um, same as English mustard. Yeah. Yeah, let's give them a shake and pop them back in. Nice. I always worry about even like doing like a, a roast. I always worry about over blanching stuff. So I have to have my like Google. I've got a Google at home. I have to have one in the kitchen. Otherwise, I have to say like set an alarm for such and such because I'm terrible with setting alarms. So yeah. Top tip for the kitchen, get yourself a Google in the kitchen or an Alexa. Definitely, definitely, and like we said before, anything, just make the biggest thing, you know, um, is, is safety. Always look at your setup and if you're going to be using a little bit of oil, say for doing frying and things like that, just add maybe before you use a frying pan, now I'd probably use a pan with like taller sides and things just... Think think about where you're putting it on the stove top as well. Now I tend to put it towards the back because, back. yeah, I'm real. I'm quite clumsy now anyway, so it's just try and think of these like safety things first, mm. and then and then any ways you can, you know, still still cook a fresh plate of food, but make it as simple or cut some steps out to make it easy. Mm. So all I'm going to do now is. Your recipe would probably say um, chop everything by hand, but I'm just going to, the food processor, everything's just going to go in there. So I've just got my mayo. So the, re the rest of the cards are all up, so if I do miss anything, it's all, it's all in there. Got my mayo, I've got some horseradish and some mustard. Nice. I've got some few capers going in there. Capers are one of those things that are really like, you either like capers or you hate, it's like a bit like Marmite, I think. Mm. I, I like them, but not too many. Yeah. If you put too many in things. A two, um, two, two, two vinegar, you know, two, two vinegar. Yeah. A couple of gherkins in there. Yeah, bring on the wallies. Um, Onion, spring onion, red onion, um, pop that in there. I'm just going to squeeze a lemon juice. A little bit of parsley. I saw a top tip, I, well, whether it is a top tip or not, um, I saw a chef on the TV the other day, um, the way that she squeezed the lemon, um, put it in the microwave, I think for about 15 seconds, the whole lemon, and then oh. just pierced the end, like with a skewer, and then squeezed it. So you just get the juice come out, but not mm. the pips. Uh, if you roll it and you release some of the, um, yeah. it breaks in some of the cell walls, that makes it a bit more juicier. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good tip. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I'm just going to pop that on now. I'll have to get one of those. Mm. 
I think this one was from, I, I had like a smaller one, but I just needed it a little bit bigger. I got this one from Aldi. It won't, won't very expensive. They, they do them for one, do they? Yeah, I've got a smaller one. I think it, I think it was like a Delia Smith make or something like that. Um, and we, I think it's it's too small for two or any more. But I think got for a one, one, one. But... yeah. I've got a Nutribullet. Nutribullets are good. Yeah. And then they like the tiny one. You just put it all in like the canister, then put it on top. Yeah. And just blitz it and do. I will show you Friday if you all log in. And... What's that? Use of a neutral bullet and chip spice in a dessert. Chip spice, <laughs> chip spice dessert, and then use of my neutral bullet. Yeah. Oh, and my new oven. Oh, new. Ooh. I've got an eBay second hand. It's one of these Sage IQ things. It's amazing. My baking has come on par. Good. Good. Great. So that's the tart to sauce. Just a couple of minutes in the, um, well, a couple of oh. seconds, sorry, in the blender. Yeah, the stuff you get in restaurants is disgusting. Mm. It can be. Yeah, definitely. Too, 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 it's, too not, it's not the same. Or in the local pub. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think also sometimes they buy, like, if you're going to, like, I don't know, with a spoons, ooh, not there's anything wrong with spoons, um, but if you're going to sort of like a, a carver, oh, they tend to buy it in like five gallon drums, don't they? And it's yeah. Like a bit sloppy. Bland. Yeah. Yeah. There's not enough flavour to it, is the Perhaps the. I mean, I think being a chef, I do like to try and make as much as I can, but. Sometimes I've got to like come to that compromise of mm. am I gonna be like absolutely worn out for days or you know, is it is it worth you know it's just trying to work out what's best for yourself. So I've just got that dish out of the oven now and that's ready after about 10, 10 minutes really. I'll just give the um potatoes a couple more minutes. I'm getting hungry. I only have brunch. <laughs> I'm not cooking today, Brenda, so it'll have to be packaged. No, tomorrow. no, I have to wait. To wait till Saturday for the old deliveries, won't you? <laughs> I'm patient. Just to say, I've popped the link. Um, so if there is anybody who wants to have a look at the recipes, um, I've popped the link in the chat there. So if you just click on um, download your fundraising pack, that's where uh, the recipe cards are. So um, that'll be for the um, everything that you've seen here. And then um, there's the banana blossom recipe as well is um, in that pack as well. Thank you. Okay. So I'm doing now, I aren't doing a big salad with it or anything because there's enough stuff there. Just a little bit of radish and tomato I had in the fridge. Have a look at those chips and see how they're doing. And then chips are ready, that's good. It's like ready, steady cooking, it's only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a little it's bit like a like, You've got five minutes, come on, bring it on. <laughs> maybe maybe that's, that's the next cafe oh, that will just drop yeah, off ready, a bag of food cook. at your door yeah. and you've got to make something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, that'd be that'd be Thanks. quite good if we've got like a um gust if we've got a bus store or something delivered. That'd be really cool. <laughs> You turn in, it's like we don't know what we're doing, but we've got oh, half an hour or 45 minutes to try and cook and it. Like SIA or you guys decide what we're going to cook or yes. what ingredients we're going to get. And I'll be like, Yeah, brilliant, girls. Thank you. Did we, <laughs> so, anyway, did, didn't we do that when we was doing the healthy hump day on a Wednesday? 
We did, yeah, we did. Um, spam. I think we had spam. We did. <laughs> and that was disgusting. Um, <laughs> we did a cupboard one, didn't we? Where it just had to be out of your cupboard. And it had to be under a certain price, and we did that, didn't we? Under three quid or something. Yeah, and I think we, a couple of times, we just picked a key ingredient, didn't we? Like, I think that was more of a laugh because people get like spam fritters and things like that. Mm. But I started like researching what you can do with spam. I think I did like some kind. I can't remember what I did. I think it was like stuffed veg with some kind of spam in it. You did. I did spam. spam. Bolognese, spam bolognese. As yep. a vegan, my well, part-time vegan. Can't say I'm a full-time vegan. Uh, my flat didn't smell very attractive for a few days. Yeah. It's a bam, bam. I definitely think for another cafe that if we just get told what ingredients to cook with, and then we come up with a dish each turn. I think that'd be a cool idea. Well, I've already been told this one. I've got to find a dessert out of chip spice. <laughs> uh, it's all right. You don't have to do it this week. <laughs> I don't think I could get that. that quickly, could I, Brenda? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. Oh, God. Hello, tonight, John. Mm. Nice. Um, I'm going to stick. Just get my peas on there. That looks lush. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm just going to oh. serve the um, tartar sauce in the pot. A little bit of parsley and just a chunk of chunk of lemon. See, that's the healthy take on oh, the wow. Brilliant. Brilliant. chips. Oh. So you've got your mushy peas. With the min, um, yeah, you got your chips done in the oven, um, your breaded, breaded. I've gone for salmon, as it's what I had in the freezer, and the mm. fresh tartar sauce. Oh, that's that's that's, looks that's amazing, it, John. When are you going to move down here? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I quite like it up north. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start parceling food up and sending it down. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That does look oh, amazing. Yeah. That looks really good. It does. Yeah, it's making me really hungry, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's really good. Really to good. to cook that, to sat sat there, was you've done all the prep. Mm. What, what was that? Prep. Sorry. I would say you, that you you just been sitting there doing all that because you've done all the prep first. Yeah, I didn't feel didn't feel too good. I don't know if it's the a mixture of everything and the jab and things like that, but I just did it in stages from about nine o'clock this morning. Mm. Whether that was going, you know, prep the chips and then I went back and did the peas and it's like mm. you were saying, Tony. We'd have to do like a film of you know behind the scenes or something. Yeah. Um, pro you probably don't want to see behind my scenes at the minute because um, there's a mountain mountain of pots of washing up. <laughs> um, Tony or John, you know you obviously were talking about um, making things as easy as possible and managing fatigue. Do you either of you um, sort of like cook a bigger batch and then freeze them? Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Def definitely, that's one thing. Um, I'm like looking at going back to work and things next week, and you know, doing obviously the two chefs things and things with SI and mentoring for backup. Seem to have quite a lot going on, and my wife works as well. So we normally, when we can, mm. maybe, maybe have a day or a few hours where we'd make a couple of. Batch instead of just yes. buying one packet of um, steak or one packet of chicken, we buy a couple and yeah. make make a couple of dishes and have one that day, and then just those plastic like um, takeaway type yes. things, just have yeah. them all in the freezer. But I think fr freezing stuff, I've got a bigger freezer now because I oh, slipped, oh, in, slipped, 
slips and fell against the last one and rips the door oh, off. I, I took the decision to get a bigger freezer because it would help. Also, the fridge was on the bottom before and I kept trying oh. to get down to it and I couldn't get back up. But now I think having the frozen like meals, what you've cooked and even like fresh herbs and things like that, mm. have them in like, you know, you can do them in like the ice cube trays or I've got bags in the freezer with parsley and different oh, things. Right, okay. Just mm. anything really to make yeah. things easier yeah. i know when you bake Tony, you quite often put um your tack cases and things in the freezer don't you, no, so if, totally. you if you're doing a live or a cooking thing or for mm. yourself it's sort of half half the job done really mm. yeah mm. yeah absolutely absolutely um, yeah can um, I, cool no i was just going to say do you I don't know if you do. Do you ever use? Do you ever make your own drinks as well? So like healthy drinks or smoothies or I do. yeah, yeah. I think um, I think it was a month. So I, it must have been a Sunday. We was doing the weekend where we do our weekend live. We yeah. both we always we always say if we're not too well. We never know what you never know what you're going to be like on the day. But we sort of just made it. A bit more relaxed we didn't put out the recipes and things right. and i think it was both having a rough weekend and i said tony i'm just gonna let's just sit and chat for half an hour and i just did a smoothie i okay. think i had some milk and yogurt um some fresh berries out the freezer um <laughs> banana roots honey and just blended blended that up and yeah. i do I do like my, you know, uh, pina colada, but need to get the need to get the ingredients in. <laughs> I always put uh, cucumber in my smoothie because apparently it gets more hydration in you because like a smoothie can be quite thick. So right, I okay. always put a uh, uh, skin uh, um, peeled cucumber in it uh, just to, it fills you with more hydration. Apparently, mm, does it? Okay. Mm. Okay. I did not know that. I, I guess it's probably up the high water content, isn't it, in cucumber, like probably mm. melon, maybe. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No water, man. Mm. You can oh, make gosh. Aquafresca, can't you, which is just literally water, ice, and either cucumber or watermelon or normal melon or apple, and you can just keep it in a water jug. Or in the fridge and just do that and just drink it. Apparently, it's a really good diet drink. Mm. <laughs> Watch this summer for skinny two chef summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think with the with the weather changing and things like that, we're definitely going down the. It's got to be like salads and barbecue mm. food and things like that. And uh, I think is is it in this mag copy of the Forward magazine, Tony? Our article on picnics and I think it might be, yeah. Mm. Oh, it was, it was barbecue. It was barbecue, wasn't it? Sorry, yeah. But yeah, I think picnic was going to be in the summer one, but we've been moving that to October now, aren't we? So yeah, yeah, yeah. But you definitely have to like change your menus and things with yeah. the seasons and things like that because when it's hot, you just want those light salads. I used to live in um, Mallorca for three years and working out there and things like oh. that it was so so hot um at the end of a ship you know even if you want work and you just wanted that light meal and the spanish heat late on a night and things but it's for a reason because it's just so hot and you don't want them big you know roast dinners and things mm. i sometimes you know, sometimes watch like i don't know it's not real life is it but like benedorm or like i don't know um whatever it is in the sun or whatever and you'd see all these people flocking to the bars having like roast dinners and fish and chips you think so yeah. why, why go abroad if you're going to eat english food yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, like a roast dinner in like i mean benedorm i mean it's hardly spain is it but i mean you don't see the i don't I see the point really like loads of uh, pan for beer i'd be rather at a nice to Ben are having some tapas and a nice jug of sangria and things like that. Yeah. Well, you should oh. eat where the food of wherever you're going. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Hmm. Um, miss out on the one. Yeah. 
<laughs> what is the local delicacy of Bognor Regis, Brenda? That's in the candy floss. That's in the. I don't in, know. <laughs> that's in the forward uh, edition this month. <laughs> I'll have a think about that. <laughs> Probably pie and chips or something. I don't know what the local delicacy is because every, all the visitors to the town are at Butlins and they're mainly from the north. Um, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> Butlins. I don't Ooh. know. I'll stick to my Italian restaurant. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we've had, we, the, you've got a really nice Italian right around the corner. Uh, Pino's and Mustard's yeah. last week was great. Mustard's restaurant. Nice. It's so nice to be able to go out and eat good food. Mm. Um, yeah. Apart from the lovely stuff Tony brings me. Obviously, mm. obviously. Thank yeah, you. Nice I'll, I'll nice the now. All the, all the chili's gone, Tony. It's all gone. <laughs> all three of them. I'm just saying. Nice chili. Um, I've, I've just seen a message from Lady Marie Quiz saying that she has uh, in the quiz in the chat saying that she has a quiz um, for us. So I think we should probably think about doing that kind of soonish because I know that will um, just to kind of I don't know what theme she's got for us or anything like that. But um, mm. Lady Marie, if you're ready for that, that would be yeah um, a nice yeah. way to That'll be good. kind of round things off. I think. Uh, it's a quiz about fish and chips. Hey. Hey. Great. <laughs> All right. You know, I only started it when I joined the meeting, so I've only done seven questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. If you allow me to share, the, um, please, then I, I can do that. Do I need something to write on? Oh. Okay. Let's try it. Oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, yeah. So I'm not allowed to share. Whoever's Maybe there. Maybe co host or something. Give Lady Marie the host. Done? No? Hmm. It's not working? Who is, where's the S at? Final Injuries Association. Who's behind? Who's got? Who's the host at the moment? Sophia. What do you need? Oh, okay. Sorry. What do you? What do you need? I. If you make me host, so I can um share the screen. Okay, one sec. Please. I think Lady Marie, if you're this quick at doing a quiz, we we might have some uh, editing work for you. You know, don't know. We yeah. Might... <laughs> well, why not? I love quizzes, you see, so. I say the queen of quizzes, so. <laughs> uh, don't look. Close oh, your eyes. Close your eyes. The menu. Close your eyes. <laughs> okay. Let's hope I haven't left the answers there as well. That looks a pretty good bit of What is the question? There. Right, can you see what it says? Grab your soul shaker because today is fish and chip cafe day, and we're having a herring plenty about. It. We're having plenty about it. <laughs> okay, question one. Ready? Mm. In what year was fish and chips first served as a dish? Oh God. Oh, 18. Oh, no, 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 no. Write the number down. Oh, oh sorry. Write it down. Really no cheating. And then let me know because the answer is coming up straight after. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, fish and chips were first served together as a dish around 1860. Oh, wow. I got 1878. I got 1863. No, not 1860. <laughs> Question two. In what year did they stop selling fish and chips in newspapers? <laughs> mm. Oh, man. Hmm. Um. 
Ready? Yeah. 1980s. Oh my God. Did you know like, what they, they came, really? In the 1980s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey. Question three. How many portions of fish and chips are eaten yearly by the British? <laughs> what, per person or? Are you, are you, are you, the whole, on a whole. A year? Oh, God. How many portions are eaten yearly? Yearly. Oh. Whoever gets the closest to the number, I'll let you have that point. Okay, that, yeah, that'll have to do. Ready? Yeah. Mm. yeah. They eat about 382 million portions of fish and chips every year. <gasps> That's oh, okay. six servings for oh, every God. man, woman, and yeah. child. Wow. I, I was miles off there. Me, oh, me too, miles. Alison. I, you I need to add that. 100 million onto mine to be <laughs> <laughs> 300 million, sorry. Oh dear. Yeah, I had 700 million. Oh, we got very good fish and chips. Oh no, 700 million, that's way off. <laughs> now, number four, how many specialist fish and chip shops are in the UK? I miss the word shop, sir. Specialist, that's all they sell, fish, the specializing fish and chips. Oh. <laughs> mm. Just take a guess. You will get the answer in the end. Ready? Yeah. There are currently about wow. 10,500 fish shops. Oh, I've got 8,400. Close. 12,000 12, for me. I put 100,000. <laughs> 10,000, so I wasn't too far off. 10,000, you can have the point. <laughs> Question five The word battery is from which language? Hmm. I'm doing horrifically at this quiz. Thank you, Lady Moran. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I'll stick to Ready? <laughs> yeah. It is from the French word, but whoever you pronounce that means to me. You didn't see that. <laughs> Number seven, which English city eats the most mushy peas? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Go on, then. I'll let, let you have that one. Are we ready? Yeah. Uh, Manchester. Uh, uh, number uh, one for eating mushy oh. peas. Or it might have been Hull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it be so, <laughs> the, the last three questions I'm just going to ask you Mushy peas being such a popular. What? Yeah, I don't want to see it. I'm asking you, just, just shout out. Mushy peas, a popular side dish for fish and chips. What's it made from? Liquor. I don't tell me mushy peas. Is it made from liquor? Try please. I want exactly what it's made from and how it's made too. And don't tell me it was, it's mashed up. Mushy peas. peas. Right. Mushy peas are made up of dried marrow fat peas, oh, yeah. which are first soaked overnight in water with two teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda. Oh. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so there. <laughs> then, oh, yes. If you get the marrow true fat. Or bit. True or false? Fish and chips appeared in Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. True or false? True. Any, anybody else? False. False. How many false? false? Put your hand up, please. False. And how many truths? Yes. One, two, three. Yeah, it's true. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm done. Thank you, Lady Marie. Thank you, Lady Marie. It's great. <laughs> I have to be funny. Now I've got one. <laughs> I feel quite balanced at my knowledge. 
Oh, Tony, yeah. how many did you get? Well, <laughs> I would have thought there been so many questions about fish and chips. Come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. Um, one yeah. thing I was going to ask, is it possible for Sophie to send us, or whoever it was running the back end of this, to send us the uh, Zoom, the actual Zoom file, because we got a link before and I couldn't actually upload it to our, uh, our YouTube account. So yeah, if you can send the, the Zoom files over to us, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for that and for showing us um, some of the recipes and hopefully um, some of you will be on the live on Friday. If you're not already part of the group, um, definitely join um, and try and get along to that. Um, uh, if you just type in to SCI Chefs on Facebook, it should pop up. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you so much, John and Tony, for sharing that. And um, we will see you, I'm sure, on another um, online cafe soon. Yeah. On a ready, on a ready, steady cook, ready cook style one. one. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's a definite. <laughs> I'll just see you on the telly, so no either. Supported yeah. by Gusto or Hello Fresh. When's our when's our next slots available, uh, Sophie? Don't know, Sophie. Uh, I think September now. Wow. Yeah. Get you booked in for September for Ready Steady Cook. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be amazing. I'm down for that. So yeah. chip spice, ice cream, nothing <laughs> <and something> else. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's gonna to have to be something with caramel. I bet he finds a way of using it. I bet he finds a way of using it. Oh, one thousand percent, Brenda. You know, and you're going to be trying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my ice cream. <laughs> no, I'm not too sure. It's, it's funny, Tony. You know, when we was doing spam. Yeah. Oh, I nearly God. made spam. I nearly made spam ice cream. <laughs> oh, yeah. What about oh, yeah. corned beef ice cream? <laughs> oh, oh, that's gross, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Going all Heston Blumenthal now with your snail porridge. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely. <laughs> he, he put chip spice on ice cream. <laughs> I like the Heston Blumenthal, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching, thank everybody. You. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, you very much. much thank you, guys. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, it. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. 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 Bye